عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه من التباه ده إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز نزبك فذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين remind the Muslims and keep reminding them because they will receive an admonition by constant reminding so just as a reminder though our mashayikh might shed light so maybe they discussed already some of these points which we are going inshallah to elaborate more on some of them but I feel there is no harm inshallah because this inshallah will, will give us admonition and we will be uh, reminded by going through them uh, rulings and regulations that are related to the fast uh, first of all the niyyah the niyyah or the intention of the fast and before we uh, and uh, the hadith the prophet sallallahu said he who does not have the niyyah or the intention from the night he has no fast that means his fast is invalid and this is of course applied to the fard fast Ramadan, the obligatory fast, not for nothing. Nothing you can have the niyyah from the morning, no problem. And uh, but first of all, we have to understand, and as we know that uh, yad deeds will be judged according to one's intention, according to one's intention. So what is the niyyah? The niyyah it is a mental preparation that you prepare yourself mentally. For instance, when you get up to take wudu, that is a niyyah in itself. You are now taking the ablution taking wudu if someone asks you what are you doing I'm taking wudu I'm taking a pollution what for I'm going to pray I'm going to the masjid so when you are leaving from your house to the masjid the niya is already in your heart the niya is already in your heart if someone comes uh, meets you on the way where are you I'm going to pray dhuhr so the niya is already in your heart when we get up at night when we get up at night and we are eating the suhoor if uh, your little child said daddy why are we eating now? Because my son, it is tomorrow Ramadan, we are fasting. So the niyyah is already in the heart. It's already there. Not that some Muslims, they might say, we have to say it. We have to utter it and we have to pronounce it. What for? There is no need for you to pronounce it. It should be there in your heart. So that is very important because the niyyah is the, it helps us to differentiate and distinguishes between the ibadah and the adah okay which is active worship and which is a habit or custom so only for instance if we have two people are fasting fasting in the sense they are not eating and drinking but one is fasting only to lose weight he's on a diet and the other one is fasting to please Allah so that one though he is fasting he's not getting any reward from Allah but the other one will get the reward because of the intention because of that nobility the noble intention which he has. Uh, who are exempted from fasting or siyam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said in the previous talks, that this deen is so simple, very simple, and it is very practical as well. So some people, they might not be able to fast, and they are incapable to fast. So Allah exempted them from observing this pillar of Islam, which is the fast. First, the first one is the insane, al majnoon the insane, the one who lost his sanity. So we don't ask him, he is not obligated to fast. The second one, children who haven't reached the age of puberty, but it is recommended that we train children to fast. We train them, even half a day. Maybe the second day he will complete one day. So we train the children, and that was the the women of the Sahaba. They were training their children. So we train the children to get used to the to the fast. In the same way, we train them to pray. Also, pregnant women, because we know women during pregnancy, they feel weak. So some of them fast might affect her health, might affect her health. So they are exempted from fasting and they have to give what we call kafara every day they have to feed one poor man but if they come fast they should give it a try I don't want our sisters to take it as a, as a, uh, a chance for them and they should stop fasting no they should try their best if she found out that fasting really affecting her health and weakening her 
then she can break her, her fast. But she should not from day one says, I am pregnant, I will not fast. No, give it a try. Give it a try. Then if you find it difficult, then you, then you, uh, you can break your fast. Also, those who are ill and the travelers and the elders as well, they can also uh, break their fast. Travelers, even nowadays, we travel in aeroplanes and they have a AC and, and everything. Nevertheless, you can break your fast if you wish. The rukhsa, the permissibility, is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whether you are traveling by an aeroplane or by car, it's still the travel itself or the journey is something tiring. And the Prophet ﷺ said, As-safaru qit'atun min al-adab. So traveling is indeed a piece of punishment. And it is. Even if you are on an airplane, you come through turbulence, what happens? Huh? You feel that you are going to die. So still, you suffer, though you are on, on, uh, on board of an airplane. So still, those who are traveling, they can break their fast if they wish. And if they feel tired, also they can break their fast. And the scholars, they differed about this point, which is better, to complete or to break. There are uh, two opinions about this. Some they say you break your fast when you are traveling. Some they say you carry on. And both of them are correct. Because the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he used to fast. And also the Sahaba, they used to fast. And some of them, they used to break. And none of them will, will blame each other. Those who are fasting will not talk about those who are not fasting. And those who are not fasting will not talk about those who are fasting because the room and the freedom is there and also women during the period of menstruation or after uh, childbirth they are not allowed actually to fast they should break their their fast validity of fasting the validity of the fasting depends on the following first of all we have to abstain from food liquids sexual activities from dawn to sunset from dawn to sunset you should not uh, be uh, doing any of these things also the intention we should uh, have the intention which is we said it's a mental preparation and also uh, <clears throat> the uh, it's recommended as well to take the suhoor before preserving the 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 fast so these are the things so what will uh, invalidate what will invalidate one's fast whatever goes into the body through the mouth food drink and also sexual intercourse and the glucose which is some injections that are nutritious that is food that should will break your fast that also will break your fast and of course it is desirable as it is known to all of you to break one fast as soon as possible and to break with date and water. If there is no date, then water. Date. That is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And after breaking our fast, we say, ذهب الظما وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. Which means, thirst has gone, veins are flowing again, and the reward is certain, إن شاء الله. That's the meaning of the dua. And we say this after we ate and drank, etc. We find some Muslims immediately when he is sipping, he's saying the hab dhamma. You are still thirsty. So how you are saying the hab of dhamma? Uh, things that which uh, uh, invalidate one's fast, and of course they require uh, qada, or you have to make up these days. For instance, eating or drinking intentionally. If you eat or drink intentionally, you have, your fast will be invalidated, and you have to make up one day. Also, uh, if you vomit intentionally, throw up, that means by putting your finger into your mouth, and then you vomit, that also will break your fast. But if you vomited despite your will, you smelled something and you couldn't take it, and you vomited, that will not break your fast. You just rinse your mouth and continue. Also, <clears throat> The, the moment a, a woman gets her period, she has to break her fast. Even if it is just five minutes before Adhan. Or ten minutes before Adhan, before the, the sun sets. She got her period, she cannot, she cannot carry on fasting. Because her fast now is invalid. 
And of course, eating or drinking or having intercourse after dawn, that also invalidates. The things that will not invalidate one's uh, fast. If anyone forgets that he is fasting and eats and drinks, he should carry on fasting. If, for instance, I forgot that I am observing fast, then I uh, ate or I drank, then I remembered I should carry on. And the scholars here, they differ. There are two opinions. They said, if you saw someone in Ramadan eating or drinking by mistake, should you keep quiet or should you remind him? Okay. Some, they say, you keep quiet. Because this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why you want to deprive him of this? Okay? So why you want to deprive him of this? So let him... Uh, carry on eating and drinking. The other opinion says no, you should remind him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us as Muslims to cooperate with each other regarding the birr, which is righteousness and piety, and not to help each other regarding transgression, which is the idwan. So I have to, to remind him. But even if you, after you eat and you are now full, mashallah, and your thirst is gone, and then you remembered, alhamdulillah, Carry on fasting. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't happen to anyone. It is out of Allah's mercy. Sometimes you feel you are very thirsty. Your lips are dry. And Allah will make you to forget. To forget. To forget and you will go open the fridge, take water, and you will drink and put it back. Then you will remember. Because you need it. Because Allah is merciful. And he is more merciful to us than our mothers. Uh, things that which uh, uh, invalidate one's fast and of course they require uh, qada or you have to make up these days for instance eating or drinking intentionally if you eat or drink intentionally you have your fast will be invalidated and you have to make up one day also uh, if you Vomit intentionally, throw up. That means by putting your finger into your mouth and then you vomit. That also will break your fast. But if you vomited despite your will, you smelled something and you couldn't take it and you vomited, that will not break your fast. You just rinse your mouth and continue. Also, <clears throat> the, the moment a, a woman gets her period, she has to break her fast. Even if it is just five minutes before Adam or 10 minutes before Adhan, before the, the sun sets. She got her period, she cannot, she cannot carry on fasting because her fast now is invalid. And of course, eating or drinking or having intercourse after dawn, that also invalidates. The things that will not invalidate one's uh, fast. If anyone forgets that he is fasting and eats and drinks, he should carry on fasting. If, for instance, I forgot that I am observing fast, then I uh, ate or I drank, then I remembered I should carry on. And the scholars here, they differ. There are two opinions. They said, if you saw someone in Ramadan eating or drinking by mistake, should you keep quiet or should you remind him? Okay. Some, they say you keep quiet. Because this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why you want to deprive him of this? Okay? So why you want to deprive him of this? So let him uh, carry on eating and drinking. The other opinion says no. You should remind him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us as Muslims to cooperate with each other regarding the birr, which is righteousness and piety, and not to help each other regarding transgression, which is the idwan. So I have to to remind him. But even if you, after you eat and you are now full, mashallah, and your thirst is gone, and then you remembered, alhamdulillah, carry on fasting. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't happen to anyone. It is out of Allah's mercy. Sometimes you feel you are very thirsty. Your lips are dry, and Allah will make you to forget, to forget, to forget, and you will go open the fridge, take water, and you will drink and put it back, then you'll remember. Because you need it. Because Allah is merciful. And He is more merciful to us than our mothers. Than our mothers. Also, 
unintentional vomiting, if you vomited unintentionally, you threw up unintentionally, your fast is okay. Just rinse your mouth and proceed, and proceed. Uh, also swallowing things which are not possible to avoid, like the saliva, your own saliva, if you swallow it, will that invalidate your fast? No. That will not invalidate. Even the sputum, even not only the, the, the normal saliva, it is what they call nukhama, the sputum itself. Will that also invalidate your fast? No, it will not invalidate your fast. But of course it is re recommended to throw it out. But if someone swallowed his own sputum, that will not break his own, his own fast. <clears throat> and also the dust of the street. Let's say that you pass and it was a very dusty day and the dust has gone. Or you pass by a mill and the flour is, has entered into your, uh, into your chest, etc. That also will not, uh, will not inshallah, uh, invalidate. Also, uh, <clears throat> the same thing, smoke. If you, there is a smoke and you pass and it went into your body, that also will not invalidate your body. But smoking, cigarettes, of course, as you know, it is haram. I'm telling you Muslims, it's haram and Muslims should give it up. And also, you can brush your teeth during Ramadan, there's no harm, even using the toothpaste, but make sure that it will not, you don't swallow it. You don't swallow it. And also, the injections that also will not uh, affect your fast, unless, as I said, it is uh, nutritious. It is like the glucose which you can live on, that also uh, uh, invalidate the fast. Otherwise, normal injections or giving blood donation or something, or they extract blood from your body because for medical tests, etc., that will not invalidate your fast. And uh, so these are, in brief, the... Uh, the rulings related to the topic of fasting and the virtues of fasting and some rulings of the fasting. May Allah accept our deeds and may Allah increase our knowledge in his deen. Amen. And now, inshallah, we open the floor for questions. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah honor you, Sheikh. Uh, I'd like to ask you if I wake up in the morning uh, in a state of Janaba, will this invalidate my fasting or reduce my reward? Okay. This is a good question. Uh, if I get up in the morning in a state of Janaba. Janaba is a sexual defilement. After one had sex with his wife and or wet dream, those who are not married, they got up in the morning and they had wet dream. Will that also will that invalidate his, his fast? No. Aisha said in Bukhari radiallahu anha that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to get up in the morning in state of Janaba and he would just presume and carry on fasting. So that has nothing to do with the fast or the validity of the fast. The fast is valid, though it is recommended that according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that when you make laugh the night before that you take a shower before you go to sleep or at least wudu. The minimum thing that you take is wudu. You go take wudu before you sleep. You take wudu then you go to sleep in the morning you take the shower. In the morning you take the shower. Next question please. If I'm living in a western country or in a place in which the daytime is too long, more than even 17 hours or something like that. What should I do as a Muslim craving for observing fasting? All right. Alhamdulillah, the, the scholars, they gave the answer of this. Not only the scholars, the Prophet Sallallahu he gave the, scholar, the answer to this question, especially for places where the day is very long. And the answer is that as long as that particular place is having day and night within the 24 hours, that is their day. Whether it is 20 hours, whether it is 18 hours, etc. They have to observe fasting according to their day, from the break of the day until the sun sets. But places that they don't have day and night, for instance, in some countries, the day is six months and the night is six months. So how do they fast and how do they pray? In this case, we standard, there are two opinions. The first opinion says that we standardize them according to Makkah. According to Makkah, because that is the reference. So we standardize them. Then in this case, those people, because they don't have day and night, they can fast by the hours. How many hours people in Makkah they fast, they go according to that. The other opinion says the next country to them, the closest country to them which has day and night, they should follow it. 
So there are two opinions. But uh, this is in the absence of day and night. But countries that have day and nights, whether the day, irrespective of the, du the duration of the day or the length of the day or the length of the night, they have to observe fasting. And Allah knows best. Next question, is there any more questions? Now we are living in the West, and you said that I have to observe fasting. Exactly. But if it is 20 hours a day, the day is 20 hours, should I fast the 20 hours? Exactly, that's what I said. I said, that is your day. But I have something. And not only this, not only this, some, some, uh, in the other season it will be different. After a few years, your fasting period will be only a few hours. You see, this is the justice. In one season, it is a long. A season will come, it will be only very, very short. So that is, that is the, that's the ruling in Islam. Any more questions? Now we are supposed to dedicate as much as possible of our time to uh, worship of Allah being in the last uh, 10 days or 10 nights of Ramadan. But unfortunately, most people, or maybe some of them, concentrate only on the five nights, uh, one of which contained uh, the Layt al-Qadr. Mm. Please uh, say something to such people. Of course, as I said, we should have, we should have the same vigor and strength from day one of Ramadan until the end of Ramadan. We should not only worship Allah in the last ten nights and dedicate it to the worship of Allah. From day one, we should worship Allah and work hard, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the month will set us free from the punishment of the hellfire. May Allah accept our fast and your fast. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.